your brain can store around 2.5 petabytes, or otherwise a million gigabytes of information. This capacity is comparable to about 3 million hours of television shows, meaning you would need to leave the TV running continuously for over 300 years to use up all that storage. My name is Matt, or Trick, because I use my science background to teach hundreds of students and their brains how to do really cool tricks without breaking themselves over many years. We're going to walk away understanding how to really go about learning to maximize your life's vast potential by understanding just how much total information you can actually handle, the incredible way all the things you know are stored and changed, even destroyed as time goes by, and what specific things you can do to be your best awesome self. When it comes to your total storage, your brain has about 86 billion neurons. On average, each neuron makes about one to 10,000 connections to other neurons that are called synapses, although some can make more than that. Everything you know, all of your knowledge, memories, learned skills are not stored in a single synapse, but rather in patterns of synapses across your neurons, which are only used when you actively recall any information or skill that you want to use. When it comes to the sheer volume of information that your brain can actually store, it's not so much like a computer. Your brain doesn't actually have a cap to it like a hard drive on a computer. Instead, your brain is like like a planet. While the neurons or buildings on the planet may stay fixed, the total amount of synapses or roads and bridges that can be made is absolutely insane. But while the amount of roads and connections those roads can have to each other is pretty limitless, there is an actual limit that your brain has to account for. You see, not only do these roads take up physical space in your head before they crowd each other out, making them way less efficient, but every single road takes up energy that has to be used to maintain it, to synthesize neurotransmitters, and general structural upkeep. This is why your brain takes up to 20% of your total energy, and also why it will quickly downgrade or just outright destroy any roads that aren't being used, like those piano lessons you learned when you were 6 and never came back to. While well, any roads that are used a lot, it will build them up and make them magnificent. While incredibly hardworking people can exceed the theoretical 100 trillion synaptic connections, they can't actually get anywhere ridiculous like creating 200 trillion connections. The brain is on a constant watch to be efficient with its use of roads, yet you can still become far better at complex skills than other people. Why is this? Oftentimes, when you learn something new, like a new anatomy term, maybe a cartwheel that you've turned into a two-foot landing called a round-off, your brain will prioritize reusing connections or roads that it has already built over making brand new ones. Remember, knowledge is a sequence of connections firing off in your brain, so when you learn more math, depending on how much you already know, your brain will store that information by simply making a new pattern on already existing roads. Once it's done this, then some restructuring will happen, where roads are either strengthened or weakened, and if it happens to be a really novel experience, then your brain will have to make some new roads. To give you an example of just how much restructuring goes on in your brain, when you first encounter something brand new like calculus or a sweet backflip, the brain may have to make anywhere from 1 to 5,000 new connections. With repeated practice, this number could increase significantly, resulting in 10 to 30,000 or more connections being strengthened and or destroyed. And the great thing is, once you have these roads built in place, if you want to learn a swing backflip off of one foot, most of the learning that happens will be your brain simply reusing all the backflip roads. Now, how do we actually work to reach our vast potential? What are the best things we can do to ensure we are making the best roads possible? This brings us to something called active engagement. You see, passively receiving things sucks. Our brains do not like making new roads to add on to its list of things that it has to upkeep. The only way that we can really get our brain to learn new information is by actively doing something, 
doing active volume will do wonders for you. Instead of you making my mistake for the first year of college where I just read my textbooks a lot, praying that the notes from my biochemistry class would just sink in, writing the notes once during a class doesn't cut it, as well as passively reading a textbook. Writing out the math problem or the anatomy terms for that darn anatomy lab over and over, or even teaching the material to a group of friends, this is the way to go. Because your brain will destroy any thing that is not actively being used a lot and will quickly move to eradicate those pathways. I remember the times that I've been asked to explain a concept by a really eager student that I've never really had to explain before. But I would notice by the third or fourth time I had to explain the concept, my explanation became so much clearer. Cause having to actively verbally say it versus just thinking it to someone who has locked eyes with me, this forced me to really etch these things into my mind. Anytime you can go hands on and actively learn using as many of your verbal and movement functions as possible, it's going to stick a lot faster. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one detail for last. We all know that learning can be really tedious, and perhaps the most powerful tool I've had to use as a student and as an entrepreneur who just watches my views slowly tick up is a technique called reframing, which can involve drastically changing the way that you view situations, experiences, and even your own emotions. If you want to know how to reframe learning to make it one heck of an experience, then 